Hi everyone, it's Jan from Jan Plans Things and welcome to my Plan With Me video for this week. I'll be doing the same as I did last week and having all the materials that I'm using appearing on the top left hand side. Um, and as the theme is continuing, it's all developing, um, I'm doing another Humphrey adventure this week and this time he's in space. <laughs> I've always loved doing my space month so um, it's nice to do a little version of him in space this time. Uh, the only difference is instead of giving him a completely round helmet. I've given him a cat ear helmet but it's kind of I realized afterwards after looking at it um, it kind of looks like he's got double ears. I don't know. You kind of exaggerate the size of the head to make it a little bit more bobble-headed to make the figure more cute but it does look a little bit strange because his ears are clear inside and he's got an extra part outside but whatever I'm actually pretty happy with it I think it's really really cute I've got him doing like a moon landing version this time so he's like prancing around on the surface of the moon or bouncing around um, I've got a little cable that kind of trails off into nothingness mainly for composition's sake so that kind of um, it kind of like grounds the right hand side of the image and I've just got a little arch at the bottom to represent the moon and I'm using um, as always my nice bright golden stars which I always really do love drawing because I feel like they add a little bit of sparkle to the page. I'm doing that little technique that I've done in the past where um, I've done the detailed drawing in the center and I'm just outlining the very outside of it with the black pen. That's mainly just to make everything pop a little bit more. I'm also using the Micron um, to do like the big black splotches that I was using white um, ink on mainly because I find that the white ink doesn't work as well on top of watercolor. If you have maybe a black washi tape that you want to cut up instead if you're worried about it bleeding underneath that works pretty well as well or just even black paper and if you have like a circular a larger circular hole punch you can use the black paper to do the date dots like I am now instead of using the pen especially if you're concerned with everything bleeding through. I've mainly I've mainly really only doing five days this time because you've noticed that my weekend days are very very close to the image mainly because I'm finding that I don't really log much on the weekend because I uh, know I want to sleep or something <laughs> so I because I'm working I work full-time as an architect I spend I do most of my logs during the week so I find those days a little bit more important for me to have um, to have full and if I do need to have that uh, information a little bit more detailed I can do dailies for each one instead so that is up to you how you arrange this page I feel like you could also do it a little bit more free-flowing you could probably use dates as um, little stars instead if um, just kind of floating around to kind of uh, do it if you just wanted to do it daily instead instead of setting up the columns but mainly because I've got some pretty big uh, milestones to hit this week I've made it a little bit more um, more like grid like just so that I know how much space I have in each day so it really depends on how you need to use the layout um, you'll find that I use very minimal colors in my spreads for these types of layouts mainly because I um, I want the color palette to be quite um, easy because I'm changing kind of the scene that Humphrey's in every week so that I instead I try to keep the colors a little bit more consistent the big difference is this week instead of using a Daniel Smith um, blue um, I'm mixing it this time with the my jello mission blue mainly because I've started swatching them all and I'm finding that the, the mission colors are nice and smooth um, Daniel Smith colors are a little bit more granulating so I'm using a my jello mission ultramarine light which has the same pigment color as the Daniel Smith um, Ultramarine. The Daniel Smith one I do find brighter um, but the Mygella one's a bit smoother so there's less um, granulation so if you want a little bit more control um, it's a pretty good paint so as I use it a little bit more I will do a review later on when I have a little bit more exposure to it. I'm mixing the blue with a uh, neutral tint and that's how I'm darkening all the colors and doing all the shadows this um, this week. So um, kind of uh, expanding on from what we did last week I am putting the darker color behind Humphrey just to make that part of the image pop a little bit more. 
Also, I find that when I'm painting the very background of it, I'm kind of not concentrating. So sometimes the cloud isn't as the right shape that I would do it if I was thinking about composition a little bit more. But I find that you can fix that um, a lot by just concentrating a bit harder when you're doing the darker one because the lighter cloud kind of disappears after all. You notice it a little, a lot less. My accent color this month is the gold. I'm using the Queen of Crido and gold from Dan Smith, which is probably my favorite yellow of all time. Also discontinued because. I don't know so this is the this is the pigment which is P049 I believe it is um, the quick kinoquidone gold uh, I think that pigment used to be an automobile color that was made by Daniel Smith it wasn't made by Daniel Smith they bought all of the automobile pigment um, back in the day I think if you think about it like in the 70s there was those lovely bright yellow cars but then it went out of fashion so what happened was the pigment actually ran out I think sometime two years ago so you can't actually buy this gold color anymore so it's like my precious like in Goblin and Lord of the Rings um, but I do love using it it's such a lovely bright and deep gold at the same time. I'm not using any blacks in this image. All the black or darker anything I'm using is all in the um, the Mygella Nutrient Tint. I did actually um, I did actually notice when I was doing the swatch cards and just breaking down the pigments within the paint that the neutral tint from Mygello does actually have black in it though. So um, if you're someone who doesn't like having a black darkening their paints and making it a little bit muddy, maybe you could probably mix your own um, own grey using an ultramarine and a burnt sienna mix, and that makes a lovely uh, a lovely tinting grey as well. But it doesn't have any black in it, so um, the color is a little bit more clarifying when you mix it with other paints. I'm using a, a thinner brush. This is the White Knights brush. Um, it's got another name, Nevskaya palette. Uh, nah, no, not gonna try. My Russian is non-existent. They, um, they're called White Knights in Australia, but on the brush it's actually written um, what the name is. I basically use this one as my detail brush. Uh, I use round brushes for everything. Mainly because I find them really good all-rounders, no pun intended, but also they're just really good basic brushes to use when you're using them in the journal. Um, I, I, um, I think that if you're doing big washes, you might want to use a mop brush or something like that. But I try to avoid using mop brushes on something like the LT mainly because the pay it would just crinkle the paper too much and then um, you'd have to spend a lot of time lifting extra pigment off the page. The metallic paints I'm using this week are the Peppercorn paints as well as the Holbein gouache. I'm not going to be using my um, my Calero colors this week. I don't know why, I just didn't reach for it when I was doing it. I kind of had my paints scattered around me and I wasn't really, um, I didn't, I was actually just feeling really lazy. The thing with the Calero paints is you kind of have to spray it first to get the water to sink in and make it a little bit um, easier to mix so that it looks it goes on like foil. What I find with the Peppercorn paint as well as the Holbein gouache, I don't have to wait at all. So I was just feeling a little bit lazy. So these were a little bit faster to use and I'm finding them very lovely as well. I do love the Holbein gold a lot because it mixes really, really well with watercolors. So you want that beautiful gold fleck through your paints. It's a really, really excellent excellent thing to use. Because we're in space, of course, all those little dots are returning from when I do my constellation cloud. Um, so I do love drawing those little dots. I find that it adds a little bit of variation to the page. And then I'll join up a couple of them just to make that kind of constellation starry look. Um, a lot of you asked last time how I did the clouds. I think it's best explained in one of my earlier um, my earlier spreads from March. It's I think um, if you go to my my March monthly setup you'll find that the mood the mood spread actually explains it quite well so I basically do all my clouds by just doing little washes in circles especially when I'm using the LT and I kind of blend them together what I find also that if you're using a smoother pigment paint like the Mygellos or the whole beans the paint itself kind of blends together a little bit more so you get a smoother cloud however if you're really loving that kind of like mix of paints that you get um, like in a lot of the galaxy tutorials online you might might need to put a lot more pigment on there and it might not be as uh, good to do it on such a thin notebook like the LT. You might have to use something a little bit thicker or um, some of you have 
cut out little cards of watercolor paper and paste it on top. I don't tend to do that mainly because I find that then it gets a little bit too thick, the journal. So I try and alter my technique and obviously the way everything looks by um, depending on which material that I'm using. I don't really do this so much um, when I'm painting on watercolor paper. I'm, I was wondering though, was there any uh, tutorial that you guys would like to see? I've noticed that a lot of you have watched the watercolor tutorial that I did ages back and um, when I have a little bit more time I'll try and do a few more. I have been uploading quick like header tutorials and everything in my Instagram stories and I've got them in my Instagram story highlights at the moment that I try and do when I've got a little bit of time but if there's anything in particular that you'd like to see I'll um, try and do a slow down video video series of it um, in the future and yeah I mean um, I do love making these videos so much and I, I'm really grateful for everyone who always comments and drops by I hope you love this one um, it's probably one of my favorite spreads in a while it's I find it so so cute and I'm gonna love having uh, Space Humphrey accompany me throughout the week on my little journeys and I'm hoping you guys have a fantastic one see you guys next week bye